Hey everyone, Wolflaw Bro here. Today we continue making a pitch for each and every Primarch being the greatest, with Conrad Kurz, the Night Haunter. A general spoiler warning to begin here, as today we will be referencing events from across the Warhammer 40k universe. So you have been warned, and with that said, let's waste no time and just jump straight in. Now, I think most of you would agree with me here, that some of these are most definitely going to be harder than others. However, within each Primarch, I think we can find a virtue where an argument can be made. And Conrad, poor, poor Conrad, is no exception. Conrad wasn't afforded the luxury of, say, a Rebute Gilliman's upbringing. He wasn't raised on the cultured world of McCrag. Educated and instructed in how to rule as equally as make war. He instead found himself upon the eternal night world of Nostramo, the Gotham City of the 40k universe, where crime and poverty were rampant and the rich treated those below them as nothing more than expendable. Conrad wasn't taken in by some loving family, not even one of those uncaring nobles. He lived and grew alone, scrounging for scraps of food and hunting whatever wildlife he could find amid the streets and back alleys. Yet as Conrad grew, surviving amid the shadows, the instinctive, ingrained sense of justice within him came to the fore. And in witnessing the countless acts of crime and callousness betrayed by the people, he began to intervene, bringing justice to the vast criminal circles of Nostramo, through terror and bloodshed. Kurz would hunt, mutilate and murder the guilty, as the most powerful criminal and corrupt elements of the capital began to vanish, the legend and whispers of the Night Haunter spread throughout the people. And soon such was the fear of becoming one of those mutilated corpses, such was the fear of facing reprisal, vengeance at the hands of this unknown figure. That crime virtually disappeared entirely, within a single year. And it was then that Conrad would reveal himself to the people, becoming the ruler of the world. And for the first and only time in its history, the people of Nostromo prospered. And we know all too well the story of the Emperor's arrival, his golden light filling the streets of Nostromo as his procession made its way throughout the city eternally blinding those who looked upon him with all his glory, and Conrad becoming overcome with visions as the Emperor stood before him. So horrifying, Conrad tried to claw out his own eyes. And that is the crux of Conrad's story, his foresight. For his entire life, Conrad was plagued with nightmares of a future he never understood. Faces he never knew, only realising when being united with his father and his brothers. Conrad's foresight was more powerful than Sanguinius's, arguably more powerful than his father's. And while power may often be seen as an advantage, here it was undoubtedly a curse. Imagine foreseeing the deaths of your brothers as you are introduced to them. Betrayal and war as they turn against each other. Foreseeing a cataclysm sweeping the galaxy, producing untold death. And an even worse fate awaiting the galaxy in its aftermath of an eternal grim darkness. It's easy to see why Conrad's visions were a torment. Every moment of joy, of peace, overshadowed by a monstrous future to come. Seeing and knowing the fate of those around you, 
without even wanting to. For while the Emperor could choose to look into the tides of fate, for Kurz it came unbidden. I hope one day we get to see Conrad's time upon the throne world by the Emperor's side, his tutelage from Malkador, where we can see how the Emperor discussed foresight with Conrad, how or if he tried to help his son in this regard, in a time where Conrad was truly at his best, where he healed Nostromo and was leading his legion as he and it was intended. The undoubted pinnacle of Conrad and the Night Lord's Legion's history. There's perhaps a clue within Kurz's Primarch novel, The Night Haunter. In Kurz's final conversation with the Emperor, we get two telling comments. There was never anything to forgive. You acted as you were made to. But my plan was interfered with. Your insanity was not your fault, nor was it mine. And then, you made but one mistake, my son. From it all the evil you have perpetrated springs. You chose to believe in immutable fate. Without choice, there is nothing. These gods that taunt us rely upon choice. A single fate is one book in a library of illimitable futures. You read only one. Do you not see that you chose this? You chose to be fate's prisoner. Now, this in all likelihood is an imagined conversation with his father, in the moments before Conrad's encounter with the assassin when Conrad had truly fallen completely to insanity. However, even with that, it's clearly what Conrad thinks his father would say. And for me, it reveals clearly how the Emperor had tried to help Conrad see how his foresight and visions aren't set, that they are just possible futures very much akin to how we've seen him discuss foresight within the novel Master of Mankind. And so this really reaffirms how dominating those visions were on Conrad, how mentally scarring, how even with his father's assistance, there was just that part of him that could not escape it. Having been plagued by those nightmares his entire life, and with the comment of it not being Conrad's fault, nor the Emperor's, that his plan had been interfered with, it's clear the Emperor holds Chaos responsible for Conrad's suffering, either because he never got the opportunity to help Conrad master it as he grew upon the throne world, or that perhaps Chaos or the Warp may be affected Conrad some way during the scattering, that maybe the foresight of Kurz was never intended to be so powerful. And the fact that Conrad dealt with all of this, and still cleansed his world of its plague of crime, still led his legion successfully before it was flooded with murderers, is an amazing accomplishment. Because let's get the facts straight here. The Night Lords under Conrad's leadership were a force to be reckoned with. They could bring a world into compliance by making an example of one city or massacring its leadership. Sure, it wasn't conventional. Sure, it appalled the more traditional Primarchs such as Rogel and Gilliman. But it was so successful Worlds were surrendering before the Night Lords even arrived. As their reputation grew, just word or rumour of their approach to a system was enough to terrify the populace into submission, making the Night Lords the only legion who could bring a world into compliance without even having to do a thing. I mean, come on now. There ain't no one matching that achievement. Not Horus Lupercal, not Lionel Johnson, 
not Rabute Gilliman. Even the Alpha Legion had to assassinate a few people. But Conrad, Conrad could get a world to surrender by his reputation alone. It is beyond tragic that Nostramo, the very world Conrad saved from darkness, that he dragged from the mire, is responsible for his fall. The Night Lord's Legion was only ever intended to have the nobility of Nostromo recruited into its ranks. However, with Conrad's absence, the old ways slowly returned. And instead, the corrupt noble families began emptying the jails to the Legion instead, filling the Night Lords with nothing but murderers and Nostromo's most depraved. It was just all an uphill battle for Conrad, from the moment he awakened within his pod. Plagued and tormented by his visions, he still managed to craft his legion into a truly elite fighting force, only to then have it corrupted from within. Yet even then, he still might have turned it around, rose from the darkness once more, if he hadn't have been betrayed by the one brother he had confided in. The one brother he told of the tormenting dreams of the heresy. Fulgrim, who went and told Rogal Dawn, who would then confront Conrad in fury instead of comfort, instead of understanding. I don't need to discuss the greatness of Conrad as a warrior today. I don't need to bring up the fact he could fight Sanguinius to a standstill. That he had Korax fall back upon Istvan, then rather fight him. That he could foresee every move of his opponent. Because we all know it, but most importantly, because he doesn't need it. The courage, the resolve he possessed for all of those years when he was literally being driven mad by tormenting nightmares of an inescapable future, is a beyond sign of greatness in itself. It wasn't Conrad who was at fault for his fall. He'd been fighting from the very beginning. It was those who Conrad should have been able to rely on. His people, his brothers, if Conrad had have been raised on terror alongside his father, taught to master his foresight from the very beginning, he would have no equal. But as it was, he still proved to be great. But unfortunately through simply continuing on, achieving what he did, in spite of a foresight that cursed him drove him to insanity. In reality, it's a miracle that Conrad resisted it for as long as he did. But as always everyone, what do you think? Is the resolve of Conrad a sign of the greatness within him? Is the fact despite suffering those nightmares, despite knowing a horrific future, he still managed to achieve what he did a sign of his quality. Does the Night Lord's Legion not get the respect it deserves for its performance during the early Great Crusade, when the Legion and Conrad were working as intended? Does Conrad get neglected because of his way of war, despite the fact that this was how the Emperor intended him? And do you think if Nostromo hadn't corrupted the Legion, Conrad's fall could have still been averted. Or was the betrayal by Fulgrim the final straw? As always everyone, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off and I'll see you all again real soon.